at 6. Very soon, this Rochester building will be reduced to rubble. It is day one of the Days in Demolition. You are watching News Channel 3 Daybreak. The time is 6 o'clock. And the national spotlight is back on the case of Jody Husentrud, a beloved KIMT Daybreak anchor who vanished more than two decades ago. We're tracking warmer temperatures and melting snow. What that means for our fog situation, coming up. And thanks for joining us. I'm George Mallet. And I'm Katie reality. Lang. First tonight, it is a downtown project that could cause headaches in Rochester. Today, crews began tearing down the Days Inn building on First Avenue Northwest. KIMT News 3's Annalise Johnson joins us live from the site. She has continuing coverage of the demolition. Rochester City Council gave a green light in June. Annalise. Katie George, while this building may be standing tall right now, it won't be come next Friday. Today I found out how this will impact drivers and people walking downtown. I'm thinking that there has to be a balance between the old just for old sake and um, making way for more safer buildings. Leslie McBride passed by the Days Inn today and she tells me she isn't sad to see it go because not everything needs to be saved. You need parking, you need uh, stores, and we have a lot of uh, hospitality um, outfits out down here that some of them are very old. It's very difficult to bring them up to code. The city issued a demolition permit and a right-of-way permit to the project. Under the right-of-way permit, some sidewalks and streets near the hotel will be blocked off for one week, but may open back up earlier if the demolition wraps up sooner. The West Center Street and First Avenue sidewalks adjacent to the Days Inn will be blocked off, so you'll need to walk on the other side of the street like I am right now. As for road closures, I spoke with city traffic engineer Sam Budzina to find out how the demolition will impact traffic. Starting tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, there will be uh, Center Street and First Avenue will both be closed to traffic. The intersection will remain open, but you won't be able to go through. When these walls come tumbling down, it may catch your eye, but Bedina is reminding drivers to keep their eyes on the road. Pay attention to where you're going. It's a, it's a big spectacle, and it's just one more thing to distract drivers, so watch where you're going and be aware of your surroundings. Metered parking here along First Avenue will also be out of commission when the road closes tomorrow. Live in Rochester, Annalise Johnson, KIMT News 3. All right, thank you, Annalise. As for what happens once the hotel's gone, uh, well, that's up in the air. Public Works told Annalise there is no permit for construction as yet on the site. Well, maybe it's because it's been so cloudy for so long, but the suddenly strong rays of sun today were at once filled with warmth and, yes, joy. So how long will we be enjoying these golden rays? Let's go to KIMT Storm Team 3 meteorologist Sarah Knox for a look at our forecast. Well, George and Katie, didn't it feel good to finally have that sunshine back in the forecast? I definitely loved it, but we did wake up to quite a bit of fog and the chance for fog developing once again returns coming into tonight and tomorrow morning. But let's take it outside. Take a live look right now over Mason City. Nice clear skies. It's been a while since we've been able to see the full city and all the way to the horizon. So it's very nice out there. Now we can thank high pressure for this. High pressure carrying on throughout the upper Midwest and that's what's clearing a lot of the clouds away. We also had some warmer temperatures, although on the decline now, 27 in Rochester, Austin, 31 in Mason. We definitely saw some great temperatures climbing well above the average. As we're heading home though and continuing into the evening, we are going to continue to see the chances or these temperatures continue to slide down. So it'll be chilly once again tonight. Clear skies, some light winds. There's that chance for fog. I'll map it out later on in the newscast, but I'm going to send things out to meteorologist Brandon Libby. He is live right now to give us a look the next couple days and what we can expect when it comes to Christmas. Brandon. Thank you so much, Sarah. Will we have a white Christmas? Christmas about a week and a half away. You need an inch of snow on the ground on the 25th to have a white Christmas. There is some snow right now, but you'll see in Sarah's seven day forecast that there's a lot of sunshine and a lot of above freezing temperatures scattered in there. So we will see a lot of melting. But what about in between the seven day forecast and Christmas? Well, here's the eight to 14 day outlook. I've took a look at some of the long term models and it does look like we have chances for above 
above average temperatures, which are in the middle 20s from the 21st through the 27th. Are they going to be above freezing? Still unclear. In terms of uh, precipitation and rain and snow, we do have below average chances for that as well, although we do pick up about two inches in that time period. And uh, that chance is not going to be zero, though. It does look like there may be some weak clipper systems moving through in the days just before Christmas that will probably drop down some snow. Our chances of seeing above an inch of snow, not very high, above two inches of snow, not very high whatsoever. So it does look like we will have a brown Christmas, a chance for that about 5 to 35 percent across the viewing area. But hopefully we could see some Christmas spirit, some more snow before that time. Live in Mason City, meteorologist Brandon Libby, KIMT News 3. All right, thank you very much, Brandon and Sarah. What is a mystery that's haunted our area for more than two decades? On June 27, 1995, Jody Husentrude never arrived at work to begin her shift as morning anchor at KIMT. On Saturday, Jody's case is being featured on an episode of 48 Hours. Today, KIMT News 3's Raquel Hellman talked with CBS News national correspondent Jim Axelrod for a look at what he uncovered while investigating the case. I know Mason City Police Chief Jeff Brinkley has always said this isn't a cold case, that they're actively investigating it. Uh, he's made that kind of one of his priorities since his first day on the job. What can you tell me about where the investigation is at right now? So, so Chief Brinkley was quite cordial, invited us in, was very um, keen to have us sit down, but he just didn't want to share very many details. Uh, in his words, he didn't want to let the cat out of the bag. I asked him, was there a cat in the bag? Was there something? And he said, yes. My next question is, are we talking about days, weeks, months away? He said, not that fast. So on one hand, yes, the chief understands, just given the emotional connection so many people have to this story, he doesn't want to shut down this case and declare it a cold case. On the other hand, he's either holding his cards very tight to his vest or there just isn't that much new to report. And you can see Raquel's full interview with Axelrod on KIMT.com. 48 Hours Find Jody airs at 9 o'clock Saturday night right here on KIMT. Well, two crashes on the same Rochester Highway. You can see from our live eye in the sky, Highway 52 in Rochester, free flowing right now, but less than two hours ago, northbound lanes were all backed up because of a vehicle flipped over near the interchange with 19th Street Northwest. And just after noon, two southbound lanes of Highway 52 were blocked after a crash near the Civic Center drive exit. Now, we don't have the names of the people involved in the crashes, nor if they were hurt. Stay with KIMT News for the latest information. Two people are hurt after a crash that split a grain trailer in half. It happened at the intersection of 270th Street and Dancer Avenue, west of Marble Rock. Troopers say 41-year-old Tony Keeling failed to stop for a stop sign and hit an empty grain trailer. Keeling and his passenger, 25-year-old Aaron Olson, were taken to Mercy Medical Center, North Iowa, for unknown injuries. Well, it's the season of giving, and one local airline is all in. Earlier this afternoon, Air Choice One's Mason City Station presented a $1,000 donation to the Humane Society of North Iowa. Air Choice One says the recent rescue of over 100 Samoyeds in Worth County was what inspired the company to donate to this local animal shelter. Wayne Thompson, the station's manager, says this is part of the company's tradition of helping community organizations. It's Along the lines of, of Air Choice One's commitment to contribute to the community, each community that we service. So it's an ongoing thing, and more of this stuff will come along as we go. Well, Air Choice One tells KIMT it was inspired by that Samoyed rescue even before multiple donation envelopes were stolen. You'll recall that earlier this week. Well, music can elevate our spirit, move us to dance, or relax our mood. Well, coming up, a project to add a state-of-the-art music annex to a Minnesota high school gets underway. KIMT News 3 at 6, live from Rochester. Your local news with Katie Lang and George Millet. Tracking storms with Storm Team 3 meteorologist Sarah Knox. This is KIMT News 3, local news from your community. We are coverage you can count on.